Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Our guest is a Nigerian film director, producer, editor, and screenwriter. He's best known for films that speak to societal ills and nagging life issues rarely documented in Nigerian movies. Let's make welcome a man with multiple nominations, awards, and recognition, Moses Iwang. Hey. Hello, How you people. How are you doing? Hi. How This is your glasses seems like it needs a wiper like it's so yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'm trying to get one installed soon okay <laughs> cool that would be nice it could yeah. be your style <laughs> so how is um i mean the industry is coming back um regardless <clears throat> of um covid19 we are seeing a lot of behind the scenes shots for real yeah a lot you are not back on set nope not yet but you've not mm. seen your colleagues back on set I have you have okay yeah. so what do you think about that yeah i mean it uh, People need to work so they can feed, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, we've been on a long, long break. It's not usual with the industry. It's a vibrant industry. People are always out there filming, making films, making content. Well, you know, COVID-19 came and we all had to succumb, mm -hmm. you know. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's good to see people getting back and telling their stories. Okay. What's that different for you? Why mm -hmm. are you not... Because oh, the project I was about to work on before the lockdown came, it's actually titled Lockdown, mm. for real, yeah. Um, it's a big one. I'm definitely going to have over 100 people on set mm. at, the, at the time. You know, crew members, over, eight, over 80 crew members and maybe over, because um, it's an ensemble cast film, uh, a lot of people, a lot of actors on set at the same time. Um, mm. Maybe 10 people on set because it's about people getting stuck in a place. So, you know, looking at 100 people on set, it's, we need to, we're still developing protocols to manage how the people, how people are going to, you know, mm. relate with each, each other on set and how we're going to work things out. Mm. Is this the biggest, sorry, do you want to tell us something about um, the storyline of lockdown? Yes. I will. Okay. I'll try to tell you something, mm -hmm. you know, but I'll try not to let it get out the bag. Mm -hmm. It's um, people who, um, for some reason, find themselves in a hospital and a virus comes in and um, obviously someone comes in with the virus and everyone is exposed, everyone there at the time is exposed to the virus and they can't be let out. Uh, oh. um, so were you, you were thinking of COVID-19 before COVID-19 came, I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's pretty close. Yes, mm. yeah. So they are stuck there. Yes, I was. You know, I'm, I have a futuristic mind. Yes, <laughs> get it. Please, can you people get edit it. virus out of your futuristic <laughs> thinking, please? Well, but it's here. Do you have everybody. any futuristic um, vision for, you know, the next few months? Maybe there's no virus. Maybe they get out of the It'll hospital. It will be contained. Vaccines will be sent out like to countries that. and mm. um, everything will, will all live happily ever after. If I can audition for the role of just passing by or something, that would be great. Yes. I want to work in that type of movie, you mm. know, <laughs> virus free. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Okay, but I wanted to ask in regards to like, maybe your personal life um, with COVID-19 and the work that you do and everything. What has been the, well, I said the biggest change that you've experienced personally? Um, I think it, the lockdown, right? Yeah. How it's affected me. The lockdown has helped me. My desk was full to the brain. Um, I had so much. I had so much. I had this project. I had that project. I had this, 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 this script to deal with, I had that other project to work out, I had this budget to tackle. I had so much on my desk prior to the lockdown. So mm -hmm. I was able to take out time. It was like it was like a reflection period for me and uh, also a lot of work to do. And I was able to use that time to sort out, you know, to clear up my desk of all the work that I had packed. You know, so yeah, I think it was good for me. Okay. Have you seen the revised um, or the proposed revised um, NBC rules? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to touch on that? I mean, you're a content creator, yeah. and I think the part that is not sitting well with a lot of content creators is the idea of um, taking away exclusivity in how they can distribute their own content. I think a lot of the content creators too got it wrong. Okay. You know, okay. people need to be able to read and act, assimilate what is there. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see, I read it and I read it again and I didn't see any part where anyone said they were going to take away your right to negotiate for your content. You know, um, regulations need to be made 
to structure how things are done. We cannot just be, you know, doing things the way we want to do it, you know. So if there's a regulation, it's a welcome one by me. I don't know about any other person. If people don't agree to it, it's their problem. It's but very me, interesting I'm that you 100% say that. One hundred percent down with that. Okay, mm. very interesting that you say that because from what we are getting with this um, regulation mm. and even the ongoing conversation. Yes, mm -hmm. and from what others are saying, I guess the louder opinion is that you can't listen. They basically want your contents to be reached to more Nigerians, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that they can take your content and maybe air it to NTA or LTV. Take or, it from where? Mm. From, they will come to your studio or to your house to take it. I guess maybe... So some things are not practical. Like I you, so. Me, I like to look at things practically. You can't. Nobody can take your content. That's not what the thing is saying. You, do, have you read it? Yeah. Okay, so what, what, what are you getting from that? When you read it, what are you I getting? What is the regulation that they're trying to It's all about put? regulating um, um, the, the... I mean, and it, I also think it focuses more on sports content, foreign it content. It did mention sports. Yes. Yeah. It focuses more on that, in the sense that the right now the what is being practiced is the way it um, the, this this content are exclusive to certain platforms, and other platforms can get it. It's a little bit unfair, and and it, it means that it can't reach the vast majority of the population because one platform is holding it down. I don't think that thing is targeted at our content creators, really. Hmm. You know, but you know, in a way, if uh, people you think are scared because, down? yeah, yeah, if it, if, I mean, for some reason, it's not targeted at you. You does know, not mean. does not mean it's not going to affect you if it if the rule actually covers your your field, your area of spe uh, specialization. You know, hmm. so uh, a lot of people are scared about that. But I think it was majorly tar targeted at at sports content and all that. But if it does affect you, I'm also thinking. Let's look at it practically. You you create this content and it's in your hard drive in your studio, mm -hmm. and you've sold it to Mr. A. Mm -hmm. Mr. Netflix, B says he wants. Mm -hmm. I think what they are trying to do with that regulation is try and regulate how much because a lot of the producers, a lot of content owners are slave driven a lot by mm -hmm. these platforms. They get you to create content for them for next to nothing. And you're happy to do it because you have nothing else to fall back on. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't decline it because, okay, you decline, what are you going to feed your family with? Mm -hmm. You know, but if there's a regulation that is going to make this content, um, content, um, these platforms pay a certain minimum mm -hmm. amount right. to content owners for this creation of content or to acquire this content, then it's welcome. I don't see that how that should be a problem, especially to the content creators, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think people should look in depthly at this, at this, at the the the, the NCC thing. Mm. Before complaining. Right? Yes, yeah. Okay, you know. you, um, you're a screenwriter. And practically too. Mm. You you're know, certain screen... things that is put down, it's not going to work practically. It's yeah. even hard to implement. Like uh, you yeah. said, how are they going to take Well, it? you think it's hard to implement on this, until they're actually ready to implement it, then you understand that Nigeria yeah, actually yeah. works when they want yes. to work, mm. right? Yeah. Okay, but taking it away from NBC and their new rules, why they're um, trying to set that right, you're a screenwriter, and over the years, one of the things that everyone can actually collectively agree when it comes to Nollywood is that they've gotten better when it comes to um, the production, the camera, the lighting, <coughs> the cinematography, basically, it's mm -hmm. actually getting better. But the scripts, a lot of people are still like, ah, we think it could be better, it could be this, it could be that. So what's your take on that? It's a field you play in. So why do you think we have a lot of backlash from that angle of Nollywood, not necessarily generally? Because um, I think people are still, I mean, from way back up until this moment, people, I think the forces of demand are strong. Mm. Um, I'll give you an example. Make a film, a film that you really, a story you really want to tell. Mm. Like back in a few years ago, I was into, I was more into action and thrillers. At that time, what was raining was Aki and Popo, mm. comedy. You get, so... Um, the investors that were investing in my film started telling me, you know what, you have to start infusing. So, I mean, the forces of demand and supply are very strong in this, our industry, uh, in the market, in the, in the economic circles of the industry and how things are being controlled. And that's going to force creatives to 
bend. you know, to bend, mm. <laughs> to bend yeah. from what they normally would have been doing, putting out to what the market wants. You know, so I know a few elitist minded people that will say, ah, this script should have been better. You could have put in more twists and all that. And they're but probably the minority mm. from what yeah, you're saying. Minority. Well, people like quick, you. Quick, people like the two of you, yeah. <laughs> is there anything we should be looking out for? Because I, I don't think lockdown is going to happen anytime soon, but is there any other project that maybe you are working on? Or? Yep, I just finished um, Bad Comments. Um, you know, like the name <laughs> depicts, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's about um, bad comments and Netflix? trolls. Yes, yeah, it's going to hit Netflix, and I'm trying to How work soon? on another one that's going to go straight to Netflix. Bad Comment is going to go through the cinema, it's going to be released in the cinema, it's going to really, you know, be okay, out so there. Take yeah, time. Okay. yeah. But I'm doing a film, it's called Emergency Room, it's going straight to Netflix. Nice. Yeah. All right, we'll look soon. out for that. Yeah. Thank you. And then I have uh, Crazy P Cold Feet. Cold, Cold Feet, Feet is yeah. hitting Netflix. Mm -hmm. In a few days. Right. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll days. look out for well, that. Yeah. Thank you for your time and doing tea with us. You're, you're welcome. All right. And that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and do join the conversation by sending your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906005719 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always to go to my co anchors, Ife Omai, Ife Oluwashuke, I had to step down due to social distancing, and of course, our studio guest, Moses Iwang. Thank you for your time. I was going to block the view from TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> My name like is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.